so hi everyone today we will be discussing about what is a neural turing machine uh, which also act as a building block for many major neural networks including memory augmented neural networks that are used for one shot learning so eventually we will try to understand what is a neural turing machine and uh, in my coming up videos we will be trying to explain how um, memory augmented neural networks that are mans are built out of neural turing machines so let's get started so basically as you must have heard uh, like the name is quite similar to what we known as turing machines uh, developed by Alan Turing. So let's get first started uh, by understanding what is a Turing machine. So basically during the World War II, uh, Alan Turing, a uh, great mathematician, you must have heard his name, uh, built up a machine to solve algorithms. So basically what was in that machine? So what the machine used to do is that uh, it has an infinite array. It was assumed that it has an infinite array and in each value of the array, each element of the array can be has can has three values, 0, 1 or a blank. Now there is a head or controller, you can say, uh, which uh, can perform three major steps. Uh, it can read a cell, write on the cell and update the cell. So uh, basically uh, the cell, uh, the head or the controller reads uh, the cells of the array one by one and eventually performs one out of these three operations. Now uh, the basic question is ki how the controller decides which uh, what to read, uh, which cell to write and which cell to update. So basically, uh, usually uh, it has been provided with a list of instructions and according to the instructions, the controller used to perform. So basically the set of instructions can be set every second cell to zero and move left. Hence, it can perform this operation, uh, fill blank values to one and move right. Hence, uh, the controller will read each cell one by one. And if the, if the value is blank, then it fills it with one and moves to right. Else it moves to right, depending upon the instructions. Now, according to Alan Turing, uh, such a machine, such a Turing machine uh, can solve any problem that is computable. That means uh, that is solvable. So if there is a problem that exists that has a solution, the Turing machine is able to solve that. So that's a big, big claim and it was even proved by him. So eventually Turing machine is a very, very powerful tool. Now, uh, the next uh, concept that we need to know before moving ahead to neural Turing machines is explicit memory in neural networks. So explicit memory in general also uh, means that uh, you have some extra information before jumping on to a task uh, so that uh, that helps you in uh, performing the task. For example, assume that uh, you need to write a, a book. Now in that case, uh, you are, if you already know English language, like you write, assume that you're writing an English language, if you already know English language, that is an extra uh, memory that you have, extra information that you have and eventually using that extra information, you would be able to perform your task. Similarly, uh, whenever we do something, we try to use our explicit memory, our experiences and eventually try to perform the task. Explicit memory uh, has the same logic, but in neural networks, what we are doing is that eventually this explicit memory is basically a uh, N cross N matrix, which stores some values from which the neural, uh, the neural network reads some values and eventually by taking its help, it is able to perform a task. So if you have read about transformers, the attention mechanism, the tension uh, matrix that is formed uh, in the transformer can be taken as an explicit memory that the neural network is generating and eventually when we are fine tuning the uh, network it is using that attention mechanism only that attention memory that we have already created to perform the particular task so uh, now coming back to the question what is a neural turing machine so if we join the two concepts together that is turing machine plus explicit memory uh, this forms a neural turing machine so uh, let's understand what happens inside it. So the head or the controller uh, gets an input from the user or from anywhere. Uh, so as in case of Turing machine, we are having an infinite array and each array has uh, and the array consists of some cells uh, having value 0, 1 and blank. In case of a neural Turing machine, we get uh, the controller gets an input and depending upon uh, then it uh, the controller goes to the memory matrix as I discussed earlier. Uh, they, uh, we have a memory matrix with the neural network. It reads from the neural net, uh, reads from the memory and combines the input and the memory information that it has got and gives an output. And now depending upon the extra information that has come. So it can be the case that uh, the memory consists of some information about a car and eventually once the, input, the new input comes in, it is adding some more information about the car. So uh, uh, apart from giving the output, the controller has a duty to update the memory also so that the new information that has come can be stored somewhere and hence the controller performs these two tasks uh, it reads from the memory produces an output and eventually if required it even writes to the memory as well 
now uh, this is all good i am able like i think as a, a noob uh, most of you would be able to understand okay what is happening but what is this controller so this controller is nothing but a neural network uh, that is getting used so basically we are giving the neural network an input the neural network using the input alongside some external memory uh, some uh, memory matrix as i to uh, told you and cross in memory matrix it is using that and eventually generating an input and updating the memory now uh, if uh, there is a like i think there would be some doubt on about you ki uh, if it is a neural network it must require some sort of a training also right uh, so how uh, we can train such a uh, neural network uh, where we are talking about explicit memory on all that stuff so eventually uh, we will be first moving on to how the neural network reads from the memory matrix so it doesn't read like this ki okay uh, read the second row first column or read the fourth column uh, fourth Uh, fourth row, second column, like this. So eventually, how does the controller read? It controller follows the idea of weighted memory reading and writing. So what is this? Uh, so basically, it reads and writes from every row present in the memory matrix. So it is using each and every uh, cell present in the memory using some weights. So it, it can be the case that uh, the first row in the memory matrix is given more weightage as compared to the second one. So uh, depending upon the weightage, uh, more inform uh, the information is uh, captured from different uh, sections of the memory matrix. So it can be the case that a section which has given lower uh, lower priority, lower weights, uh, provides very less inform uh, the uh, the controller takes very less information from that as compared to the uh, row. from which which has a higher weight providing more information so in this case as you are using some sort of a weights to read from the memory as i told you ki we are using all the memory columns all the memory rows and eventually you are providing some weights so this pro particular problem if you can uh, assume becomes differentiable in nature and hence your controller becomes trainable now uh, so basically uh, let's understand how does this particular uh, weight or attention vector is created so as i told you ki okay uh, we are generating certain sort of weights and eventually from using this weights we are reading from the memory so how is this happening how are these weights generated so let's talk about that so basically this involves four steps one is content based addressing so depending upon the similarity with the input that we have got so i told you we are getting an input and the similarity between the different rows in the memory matrix we calculate a cosine similarity uh, i think uh, this formula is a uh looking a bit dangerous but uh, nothing to worry about because it is nothing but beta here is an amplification factor that is scalar k the, the capital k represents here the cosine similarity function kt the small k uh, represents the input and uh, mti represents the ith row in the memory matrix so eventually what we are doing that we are taking an exponential of some amplified version of the cosine similarity between the input and the ith memory row upon summation of the uh, exponentials of all the memory vectors uh, all the memory rows with the input so this is how the first uh, set of uh, weights that is content based weights are generated in uh, uh, after doing content based addressing the weights that we generated were uh, wc now in that now after uh, generating a content based uh, weights we would be using location based addressing so eventually what happens is that uh as i told you ki the controller is reading continuously and giving an output and updating the memory also so at time we need to decide ki how much of the previous weights we need to use so assume that we are uh, standing at the time stamp t and we had some values for the vector we, uh, the vec the tension vector the weight vector that we are trying to generate uh, some value in the previous step also now eventually uh, what we wish to do is that we wish to take some uh, importance from the last step also so it's a mix of the current information and the previous information that we have it is something very similar to lstms if you remember the forget gate in lstms there is something very similar here so we're using a a a, a constant g uh, uh, which is acting as a gate to let in uh, how much current weights we should be giving a weightage and how much weight we should be giving to the previous weights so uh, we have a set of previous weights also Uh, and eventually in every step we are updating these weights so how much uh, of the importance should be given to the previous weights this is done using that uh, shift weighting the next step is shift weighting uh, so uh, in shift weighting what we are trying to do is that uh, we are trying to shift the focus among different memories in the explicit memory so eventually it can be the case that the weights are uh, getting accumulated at a particular point so it can be the case that the weights are always uh, uh, focusing towards uh, the row 5th and 6th so eventually we would try to smoothen that up so in that case we are trying to shift the focus uh, using a uh, shift weighting so for this uh, we are using 
a shift weighting function s which helps us in performing the rotational shift of weights and the formula given here is nothing but uh, a summation of wtj into sti minus j so uh, the explanation has been given here t represents the time stamp i represents the ith weight index in the tension vector we are preparing so uh, for each uh, memory row we are having some weight so that that i represents that uh, index for that particular row j goes from 0 to n in the summation uh, and sij is the weight shift function value for i minus j so here you can see that assume that i we have i equals to i have given an example here uh, assume that n equals to 5 n equals to 5 means that the uh, memory matrix that we have has five rows and we wish to update weights for uh, index 3 so in that case uh, the value the value the whole ex uh, expansion for this formula becomes something like this w3 equals to w3 into s3 w3 into s2 w3 into s1 w3 into s0 w3 into s minus 1 so you can see that i minus j we are doing so is as i is 3 so uh, i minus uh, 3 minus 0 is 3 3 minus 1 is 2 3 minus 1 is 1 and similarly you can see the whole exp uh, uh, expansion now what is this weight shift function s that we are talking about what is the value for this now this weight shift function can be anything uh, you can take it as an exponential you can take it as uh, an identity function you can take it as some other complex function depends upon you but this s function is a shift weight function that has to be assumed and you need to assign its value key what should be this particular function uh, giving you apt values so uh, if you have noticed uh, this particular function that, that this particular operation that you're performing above is nothing but a convolution operation so in cnns if you remember we add a convolution layer we add a kernel 3 cross 3 uh, so this is the mathematics behind this so uh, what happens is that uh, when we are doing a convolution function this is called as a convolution shift as well uh, it, it usually leads to blurring of the image if you have worked with cnn so to sharpen the results we would be deblurring the results uh, how we are doing that so we are following this particular formula that is uh, w i equals to w i raised to power y upon summation of w i raised to power i raised to power y where y is a constant and j goes from uh, 0 to n so below the denominator there is a summation and above there is no summation uh, so eventually this is how we are doing the sharpening so uh, to create this weight vectors we are following four steps if you are like if you recapitulate one is the content based addressing where we are trying to find the co-similarity between the memory uh, ith memory row and the input that we are getting then there is a location based addressing where we are using a uh, interpolation gate g for which decides key how much information from the past uh, we should be taking up the third step is shift weighting where we are trying to shift the focus from a particular locations to all the to the whole of the matrix rather than shift rather than uh, so, uh, keeping on to just one location and this can be taken as a convolution shift as well because it is pretty similar to CNNs. And the last one being uh, sharpening because convolution operation leads to deep uh, blurring of the results in the images. So what we're trying to do is that we are trying to sharpen the weights as well using the below formula. Uh, I think the formulas is something that if you wish, to, if you are a, a mathematical geek, then it is required. Else you can understand the intuition behind it. Now, as we are done, ki how weights are generated. Let's understand how read and write operations are performed. <clears throat> so read operation is nothing but summation of weight i into memory i so as i told you earlier when we are reading we are reading from all the rows so uh, what we are doing is that we are doing a summation of the weight of that particular row into the memory row so if uh, we are reading for if we have five uh, uh, rows in the particular met, met memory matrix so this would be uh, w1 into memory 1 uh, plus w2 into memory 2 plus w3 into memory 3 plus w4 into memory 4 etc eventually it is a summation of uh, the weights uh, into the uh, the corresponding rows in the memory the write operation uh, is a bit tricky it requires two steps basically uh, so first step is erasing the memory so what we are doing is that uh, we are erasing certain part of the uh, of the memory before writing something to the memory so uh, what we are doing is that uh, particular memory row i ith memory row for the current timestamp, what we are doing is that we are taking uh, its previous values, the current values we are taking up. So if we are going to update, uh, uh, assume that we are going to update second index. So what we are trying to do is to, we are taking its current values, uh, t minus one can be taken as the current values that are not updated yet, into one minus uh, wi into e. So wi is against the weight that we have, uh, the weight uh, attention vector or the weight vectors that we have calculated above, and ei is an eraser vector that has values between 0 and 1 so 
depending upon the values uh, the values get erased uh, so from 0 and 1 the elements of the memory location are reset to 0 only if both the waiting at the location and the eraser elements are 1 so you can understand that if uh, we uh, if the wait is also 1 and et is also 1 for a particular index the memory at that particular uh, the memory at, for that particular row gets completely erased and we are writing from scratch else depending upon the value of the weight and the et value uh, some partial results may get erased or it can be the case that key some partial memory is erased uh, if either of the waiting or the eraser uh, eraser vector is zero the memory is left unchanged so i think the idea is pretty clear so depending upon the value of uh, weight and et vector uh, the values in the memory are getting erased uh, now after erasing the uh, values in the memory we need to add we need to write something as well right we have uh, we have made space to write so eventually the next operation is called as add so add is nothing but again uh, the current memory uh, memory value for ith row plus the weight for the ith uh, ith row in the memory that we have calculated above into 80 so 80 is again a, a vector that we will be discussing uh, that hasn't been discussed much in the paper as well so both et and at the eraser vector and the at vector that i'm talking about in add and erase are generated using the controller only how they are getting generated is something that hasn't missed in the paper so i tried figuring out how et and at is getting generated but there were no results for that so uh, for now uh, if we recapitulate right has two major steps one is erase where we are trying to erase the memory uh, some parts of the memory and the other one being add so after erasing the memory we are using some uh, we are using a vector uh, wtn and at uh, we are updating this memory so eventually as you must have got this is how we are ending so basically what we understood is that the controller how the weighted memory um, the weights are getting generated apart from that how the controller is able to read from the uh, memory and how the controller is able to write to the memory uh, using the form using the different mathematical formula so this is uh, for the day